let's prepare on the stability of slopes so stability of slopes so here the slopes are categorized into infinite slope and finite slopes okay so the infinite slope is a slope of a semi infinite soil mass uh, where the soil properties for all the identical depths below the soil surface will be constant only okay but whereas in finite slope the slope length is to a limited uh, area only so like earth and dams and all will be of finite slope so these are the two types of slopes next we will see the slope failure so the failure occurs also there is two types one is translational where the failure occurs in the surface level so it will be a, a linear uh, failure like that okay next one is the rotational so here the failure occurs by a rotation or like a, a curved slip will be happening in the soil normally this translational will occur in the infinite soil infinite slope and this rotational will occur in the finite slope okay and then here comes the factor of safety so the factor of safety now we are going to see is for infinite slope okay so normally the factor of safety is given us uh, against the translational failure that is only infinite slope we have seen no so there they given us shear strength by shear stress so shear strength we can denote it as s and shear stress by tau so it is s by tau and it can also be written as tan phi by tan i also so these are the two formulas which is used for finding the factor of safety against the translational failure in the infinite slope so this tan phi by tan i know this is specially for the cohesion less soil and then another uh, fo f factor of safety is also given that is uh, gamma dash tan phi dash by gamma saturation tan i this is for the specially for the soils where the seepage is parallel to the slope and then the general formula that is for c phi soil so for all types of soil uh, c plus gamma z cos square i by tan cos square i tan phi by gamma z cos i sin i so this i and phi we everybody knows i is the angle of infinite slope and phi is the angle of internal friction of the soil okay so this is the i and uh, phi here and uh, gamma is the density and c is the cohesion here okay so in this formula if you substitute c is equal to 0 c is equal to 0 will be coming for the cohesion less soil because in cohesion less soil cohesion will be 0 so if you substitute c is equal to 0 here then gamma i z by gamma i z will get cancelled then cos square i by cos i will get cancelled so cos i by sin i will be there so it will be tan i so this two can be written as tan i here that is tan phi by tan i so this is the formula given here they have derived this from this formula only okay so for cohesion less soil you can directly write it as tan phi by tan i and then the next is the types of failure we are going to see so if you take this is the soil structure and this is the slope they are provided here okay so here the first type is the phase failure whereas the failure occurs in this direction that is before the uh, ground level so if you take this is the ground level and this is the height of the bund and the depth below is nothing but it is the depth of the soft stratum and here is your hard stratum okay so this is all about the h and d given here so if the failure occurs above the ground level means it is phase failure if it occurs at the ground level means it is toe failure and below the ground level means it is the base failure so here if you take this means they have written as df that is the depth factor okay so depth factor is denoted as h plus d by h okay so h plus uh, d is nothing but it is the depth of the hard stratum below the top by height of the slope okay so here if you take h plus d means if you take a that is phase failure no so if you take h plus d means uh, d is not there and h is actually less than the given h here okay so it is actually less than the given h by the total h so if you take like that the answer will be lesser only so it is less than one so if you see for base failure sorry phase failure it is less than one 
so if it is equal to 1 that is for b if you see means it's only h so d is equal to 0 so h by h will be 1 so df is equal to 1 for toe failure and df is equal to greater than 1 for base failure so from this you can find the depth factors and then comes the uh, factor of safety here also so here they have given us resisting moment by driving moment that is occurring in the soil the next comes the methods to analyze the finite slope in the previous two uh, formulas so we have dealt that for infinite slope and now we are going to do for the finite slope see in all the topics there will be some analysis done because in the previous chapter we saw earth pressure whereas uh, Rankine's theory, Coulomb wedge theory was given for the analysis of that earth pressure. Likewise, here also there are some five theories uh, which is used for analyzing this slope structures. Okay, so here the first method is called as phi u is equal to zero analysis. So this is the name itself. So here they have taken the factor of safety. So in the previous sector we saw no f is equal to resisting moment by driving moment. So that is only taken here. The resisting moment is CLR by the driving moment is equal to w into x so they will be uh, drawing a arc like structure here whereas the arc shows the failure surface like that they are assuming and then they will be taking the resisting moment and driving moment here so here c is nothing but your uh, undrained cohesion that is only mentioned as cu and then l is the length of the arc and then r is the radius of the slip circle so this is your slip circle this is nothing but uh, in finite slope we saw no rotational failure only occur so that rotational failure is only drawn like this like a arc like structure okay and then by w x w w is nothing but the weight of the sliding wedge and x is the distance of the cg of that sliding wedge from the center of the circle from this point so these are all is not necessary for the objective type questions but better knowing this formula alone is enough okay and then the critical slip circle no so this will be your minimum factor of safety from this method next one is the uh, swedish circle method so here also a arc like structure is taken but here the forces between the slices are neglected that is the arc here is there no the arc like this sits there no so they will be splitting this into several sectors so they tell that the forces between these slices are neglected in the swedish circle method and then they have given the reactions here that is the tension and the normal uh, reaction n is given here and then the weight of the wedge is also given as w so from this they have taken n is equal to w cos alpha so the angle between this weight and n is your alpha and t is equal to w sin alpha and felonious method is created from this method only so this method is specifically used to locate the center of the critical slip circle and then the earth dump stability check so when and all the stability check has to be done in the earth dump so if you want to check for the downstream means it has to be checked during the steady seepage when there is a steady seepage only you have to check that and when you want to check the stability for the upstream means you should uh, study during the sudden drawdown cases and you can check for both the upstream and downstream immediately after the construction so these are the conditions at which you can do the stability check for the earth dam and the next method third method is the bishop's method so this is also similar to the swedish circle method only and uh, the swedish circle method is also called as method of slices so remember that also this may be asked in objective so this is also uh, taken as slices only but we call the swedish circle method only as method of slices and here in between the slices the forces are considered whereas in the previous method it is not considered but here it is considered therefore this is the most accurate method for studying the stability of slopes of the finite slope so we are going to see five methods no so out of these this uh, bishop's method is only very accurate method and then fc so this is the factor of safety again for uh, uh, finding the stability of slopes so here fc is given as c by cm so why it is written as fc means it is res uh, given with respect to the cohesion 
okay so they have given c by cm so c is nothing but it is cohesion and cm is nothing but mobilized cohesion okay and which is also equal to hc by h hc is critical height and h is the actual height of the slope and which is equal to tan phi by tan phi m so phi is internal friction we know and phi m is mobilized internal friction so with respect to this formula they have written this phi m is equal to tan inverse of tan phi by f so with respect to this and this only they have written this formula and the next method fourth method is the friction circle method so this is a very simple method and here they'll be drawing a small circle of radius small r and uh, which will be equal to an another big circle of a uh, radius capital r sin phi so with respect to this they'll be calculating the uh, normal reaction and tangential reaction everything and they'll be calculating the stability of that slope okay so here also the same slip circle is drawn here with respect to the uh, rotational failure of the soil and the last fifth method is the taylor stability number so here a number is given sn stability number which is equal to c by fc into gamma h so this is an important formula so they they have asked many times uh, uh, problems using this formula okay and this can also be written as cm by gamma h because we know that fc is equal to c by cm now so that only they have substituted here so it is cm by gamma h and also we can write fc as hc by h so that they have written here hc by h and h will get cancelled so c by gamma hc also so the formula which we uh, saw in the bishop's method was that that one they have induced here and changed accordingly and then the stability factor is nothing but it is the inverse of the stability number and then if some conditions are given so you have to study all these if c is equal to 0 sn will be automatically 0 so from this itself directly we can tell that and the maximum of sn that is the maximum value the sn can have is 0 0.261 only at what condition means when i is equal to 90 degree and phi is equal to zero okay and then when does this base failure and toe failure of course so for that also they have given this condition when phi is equal to zero and i is less than 53 base failure occurs and when i is greater than 53 toe failure occurs so these two points no so these are also very important points thank you and keep watching for the next lecture on bearing capacity of soil